Okay, so, um, this is Rupert. This is our 1987 Forerunner camper conversion. We have had it for less than a week, if you can believe it. I think we'll have it a week in Wednesday. Wednesday. So two more days and we'll have had it for a week. So we're, uh, this is exactly how we got it from the, uh, the gentleman who did the conversion. Um, he didn't want to sell it. He had to, unfortunately. Um, but fortunately for us, I guess you could say, because we were able to pick it up. Um, I think what we paid was, it was worth. Uh, it definitely needs a little bit of work, but a lot of the, the main stuff has been done already. So the engine runs well. The uh, clutch and the transmission uh, all work as they should. It's got some surface rust in the frame and underneath, but it's nothing that we can't uh, take care of with a little TLC. So we're just really excited about the project and kind of diving in and figuring out all what we want to do to it uh, and then go from there. So I don't know, where do you think we should start? Up, up front under the hood? Yeah. We can kind of work our way back to the camper. I think that's probably a good idea. Okay, so. The, uh, the guy that we got it from uh, got it from Colorado Springs, um, which is why the rust isn't that bad underneath, because uh, Southern Colorado isn't known for uh, that, all the salt and everything that you get up here in New England. So this started life as a 22 RE, but he actually uh, ripped out the ECU and converted it back to basically a 20, 22 R. So it's got a new block from Engine Builders with 35K on it, um, new head gasket, a uh, new head that he picked up from somewhere else that was in a little bit better condition than the original one. And then he went ahead and put a Holly Carb on it, RV cam, new alternator, new distributor, new master cylinder, uh, new battery, uh, added an oil cooler, uh, a lot of new lines, hoses, um, fuel cell, all that's been gone through, all that's been done. We'll kind of check it out as we go through it and uh, keep an eye on things and, and kind of tweak things as we go. But uh, yeah, the, the heart and soul of it is there. We really just need mm -hmm. to kind of make it our own and continue to clean it up. So little odds and ends, like uh, we might paint the grill, uh, give it a fresh coat of paint, clean up the bumper. Eventually we'll probably add an ARB or something similar. We're leaning towards ARB just because it has that classic kind of safari look that we're going for. So I think we'll probably go that direction. Yeah. But uh, yeah, lots of room to work. Um, so I'm looking forward personally to uh, learning more about engines and, and working on them and stuff like that. You know, I can I can do the basics, but I'm really looking forward to having something that's worth keeping on the road for a long time. We're, we're planning on owning this for the next 30 years. So we would like to keep it on the road and I'm just really excited about learning what's involved with all of that because mm -hmm. I'm used to rigs that are a little bit newer, so. Easy to work on is yeah. what our hope is. There's so much room and everything is just visible really you can see everything you can learn and touch and dig around yeah definitely. and i think that's encouraging to us that we can get our hands dirty ourselves yep and we've got such a great community that uh, any mm -hmm. questions that we need answered uh, i know that we can get the answers yes definitely um okay uh continuing on here it is rust-oleum almond actually so it's really easy to uh touch up well, I mean, we can just get some rattle cans or rust-oleum in a bucket and slap it on there mm -hmm. uh the stripes he did himself with tractor paint caterpillar yellow alice chalmers orange and the red i forget but i've got it written down in our notebook <laughs> so we'll get there eventually got it um, all memorized almost yeah it does have an old school awning on it uh that's a canvas we will replace this with something like an ARB. It's just, this is cool, but the, you know, something, a basic 2500. Functional, a little more functional, a little more, functional, a little a little more space. User-friendly. We've already got the awning room for it and all that, so we'll just yeah. repurpose it. But um, yeah, why don't you take a look inside? It is a five-speed manual, four high, four low, all work, no issues. Uh, pretty Spartan interior. There's no carpet or there's no center console, none of that. So we'll we'll slowly piecemeal the interior back together. We'll either source our original parts or aftermarket stuff or fabricate stuff as needed. But that's kind of low in our priority list because it's functional right now. We'd rather focus on overhauling the camper, which you'll see in just a minute. And then kind of the top of everything off will be finishing off the cab mm, uh, yep. once we get there. So. This is um, going to be a long-term project. We just hope to build it up over the years, take our time, do things right the first time, um, invest in good 
quality products to go into this because we hope to have this, you know, until our two-year-old son takes it over eventually. Yep. <laughs> um, so I did pick up some Rust-Oleum white uh, for the roof right now. It's a teal color. Uh, it's not bad. It just doesn't really fit the the rest of the uh, the classic retro Toyota look. So we're gonna go for a white roof. Um, so we've already already started doing things. Um, yeah. Stuff that's simple that we can just kind of get done, uh, kind of get started on it. Um, even though we've got a busy season with camping and and trips and all of that. So we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Um, let's go around back and then we can go inside. So out back, we do have a full-size spare. All the tires were brand new uh, and put on last year. They are 33, 12, 5, uh, 15. So um, we'll probably go a little bit narrower, something more uh, suitable for this style of vehicle, maybe a little bit narrower um, on some old school Toyota wagon wheels or something like that, but we'll get there. Everything right now is functional. So changing things for just the appearance is not a big priority mm. right now. We'd rather, there's a lot of functional stuff that we need to do first. Mm -hmm. Um, side note, this piece, this tire carrier is actually made out of the original roll cage from the Forerunner. <laughs> when he cut the back of the body off and cut the roll cage out, he repurposed some of that. Awesome. Thing. But it's basically just bolted to the bumper, comes up with a plate, and it has some lugs on it, which we then have the wheel mounted to, and it rests on the lower support here, just for some added support there. The high lift in the back, uh, we've got the other pieces for it, like the handle and the base inside the cubbies in there, so that actually came with it. I don't know the last time it was serviced, so we need to take that off and kind of go mm. through it and tune it up, but that's not, not a big deal. Uh, a lot of the stuff he did was actually use some Jeep parts, which are great because they're relatively inexpensive and they're easy to um, find and order. So these are just uh, taillights off of an old school Jeep. So we'll probably continue doing that because a lot of the Jeep stuff, again, is so easy to get and so affordable that it kind of makes sense to why not use it yeah um again we're not we're not uh, super concerned about this being all original it's already not original because it's got a camper <laughs> conversion on it so we just want it to be functional practical um and comfortable for us so. yes definitely yeah all right uh let's jump inside and get the uh the pop top opened up okay all right Okay, so uh, to open up the camper, we basically just have to open up these levers on these ratcheting poles until they're in the quick release position, very similar to a standard ratchet strap. And then once that's done, you can simply lift it up. Once it's close to the top, you can lock in the ratchet strap handles. So we get this into position and then we can ratchet the strap to the last ratchet it into the last few positions there so now we obviously have a piece that goes in right here uh, and it's just inside the cubby right now but we left it open so it was easier to show you guys what's going on so there's a big screen window with a flap that we can roll up and velcro up uh, which creates a great view from the bunk up top when it's set up. Yes, so that's pretty nice. definitely. And so here is the upper bed. Um, and basically we've got a, just an old school mattress. We'll replace this with something a little smaller. Maybe like one of those self-inflating uh, air mattresses that are used in rooftop tents these days. Uh, but basically these panels, this one here just folds forward. And then that one slots into place. Um, it's a little bit finicky. This is one of the things that we're probably most dissatisfied with is that it's kind of hard to slide the panels over. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to modify the tracks and then make the panels into uh, add a piano hinge in between them so that we can slide them in and then just unfold them to set up the bed. So that will save us a little bit of room and just make the setup a little bit easier. Yeah. So that will be one of our first projects here. But uh, there's plenty of room. I'm standing up straight up. I'm 5'8", five, 5'9", five, or so, and I've got plenty of room. Um, I can even stand up on the bunk and basically stand up all the way. Uh, <laughs> if I step towards the back, I can I can stand up all the way without uh, touching my head. So there's yeah. plenty of room for us here. A shorties. A shorties, yeah. Uh, where Sarah is, she's standing on a basically a day bed right now uh, that then this seat here, you can unbolt and change it around a little bit and then put the cushion on top of it and it creates a, a twin bed basically a little bit more than a twin um, which will be perfect for Cal our little two-year-old um, once we're got this thing all ready to go for camping with him 
Eventually, we may change the design. I really like the uh, galley style um, troopies that you see in Australia and stuff with the pop tops. So we basically would have a side on, on one side that had the fridge um, and drawers and storage and maybe a little sink. Um, and then the other side would have basically more of like a couch or a futon type thing with a panel that dropped into the alley in between the two units. And then we had cushions that filled that up and made that all into a big bed. So I think that would work well. It would maximize space a little bit more in here and allow us to fit more of what we want to put in here, like the uh, camping cupboards and stuff. So uh, I think that's a, a solid plan. So over the, uh, over the year, we'll kind of start to sketch out the plan, set it all up, and then hopefully uh, this winter or this spring, we'll start tearing some of this out and putting some new stuff in. So we'll see. But I think what we've realized and been discussing is that, you know, I think most people's um, desire would be to immediately start ripping stuff out and changing stuff and just like starting clean um, but you know we don't plan on getting rid of this <laughs> really ever so we can take our time with it it's a livable space for right now we can throw a cooler in the back and we can sleep on what's here um, we can use what's what with what's here um, and make it work and then slowly as we live in it and use it more, we can update it, we can change things, we can tweak little things that we want differently. Um, but, the, but the bones are here. Yeah. Well, and living with it the way it is will help us really figure out what we want to do. Yeah. We're not guessing at it, what we think we want to do. Right, right. When we're living in it for a while, we can say, oh, I really wish the fridge was right here. Right. So that way we know when we do the conversion, yeah. Um, and rebuild the interior, we'll, we'll have a really uh, educated idea of what we want. Yeah, I would hate to spend a bunch of money um, making it something that we live in for you know six months, uh, camp with over a summer, and be like, realize, no, this is not going to work. <laughs> this right. is not ideal for us. This doesn't work for our family um, with kids and dogs and the two of us. We're going to have to we're going to have to do things slowly. Yeah. Um, and we're just really excited to dig into it. Yeah. Really. And just get out there and use it. I think right now we're just, we just love driving it around. I love it just <laughs> as it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, one of the things I wanted to show you guys was, um, one of the things I'm kind of obsessed with, which is cool and unique is if you look in the top corner of the roof, this roof is aluminum and uh the, the guy who did the camper conversion uh had a good buddy that was really good at tig welding so they built a wooden jig and then they welded the aluminum top together on top of the jib jig to get the shape that they wanted but if you look in the top corner this is a drain plug now why would you have a drain plug up there well i'll show you when we go back outside but on the front edge those are jeep windshield latches or uh, hinges excuse me and which means you can pull the pin out and then disconnect the hinges and then the ratcheting arms here, these are just have quick release pins. You can pull those and it will pop right off the uh, joint here. So theoretically, it's never been used as such, <laughs> but it was made to be a boat in an emergency circumstance. So on top, you actually have the little ribs like you'd find in the bottom of a mm -hmm. jar boat to help yep. it track. It's got a drain and it can completely detach from the camper because the tent just slides in on the U-shaped track and snaps in on the top here. So yeah, you can rip it out. You could probably rip this boat out pretty fast if you needed to. Yeah. And, you know, I, I doubt we'd ever put ourselves in a position where we <laughs> need to use that in an emergency purpose. Rip, but rip the boat out of the at ceiling. some point it may be, it would be kind of fun to take it <laughs> down and just paddle around once just to say that we've done it. Maiden voyage. Maiden voyage, yep. It does have some storage in it right now. It's got this cabinet here, which does you can access from the back. Uh, and right now I just have a jerry in there just because the fuel gauges aren't working. So we'd, uh, we'd rather carry some gas with us just in case. And it already came in handy. It came in handy, it did, <laughs> yep. Um, and so still getting, kind of getting used to that. But this was just kind of mocked up. It's there. Um, but uh, again, a lot of this will get reworked over time. I think he was originally planning on just using this to store a composted toilet, which is something that we will consider as mm. well. But again, we'll, we'll, we'll rework the layout here. So for now, this will just function as some added storage, which is nice. Um, underneath here, if you look at the mattress, or the foam block I should say, you do have two nice big storage bins. If I open this up, here is the tent back. We've got the um, water port hose and then the high lift stuff. It does have a three and a half gallon water port underneath and it does have a 15 gallon new fuel cell. Tons of room underneath there. I'll, I'll take you underneath in a minute when we go back outside. 
uh, but plenty of room to add a much larger, larger water tank and probably another fuel cell or a larger fuel cell because I'd love to have a longer range um, than what it has now. Yeah. And then this panel, this is just un completely unfinished storage. This is where a lot of the electrical stuff will go when we do that is strapped into the back there. Um, solar charge controller, red arc, DC to DC, uh, lithium battery, and hopefully eventually, um, and then a lot of the plugs and stuff will go on the front of this so that when we do rip this out, we can just reuse the panels or um, switches and plugs and stuff that we, uh, that we buy for that. So we're not putting them in the walls where we might not want them later. And speaking of the troopy conversion idea, it may be a little bit more work. I had mentioned doing a piano hinge on the two boards up top here, but it wouldn't be that hard to make one nice big board and get some pistons and then have the whole bed lift up with the roof and then you can pull it down when you want to use it. And mm. when you want the headroom, you can just push the whole thing back yeah, up. Yeah, we have discussed that. Let the pistons do the work. So I think that would be it'll take a little bit more doing, but that would definitely be the most usable system overall. So I think that's the best idea. And then we would have more overall um, headroom when we're inside for bad weather or whatever. Right now, the footprint is just this, um, but we would gain what yeah, you, would you say probably we would gain all this room underneath where she is sitting right now this whole panel three feet. would be coming up at an angle so we gain a good bit of height because that angle would be coming up like this to follow the bed uh we'll follow the roof line so um again it's it's got some stuff in here, but it's pretty much a blank slate for us to kind of design and do whatever we want with. Yeah, we actually really appreciate the fact that there hasn't been a ton done to it because we can make, totally make it our own. Yeah. Um, but what's here is livable for now. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. All right. Love these windows. They're so much fun when you open them all up. It just it shoves a lot of air right in there at you. It's like AC. Yeah, it doesn't have working AC, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, the AC, the old AC is there, but the, there's no more belt for it. And it used to plug into the old C, uh, ECU, so it has a plug. So I'll eventually try putting a belt on it, but I don't, I'm not sure how to make it work without the ECU. Not yet. the end of the world. Not the end of the world. So this is what it looks like um, opened up. So like I was mentioning, we have the Jeep windshield latches here. There's three of them. We could undo those if we ever wanted to. But uh, yeah. We do have... The most important part of the entire truck right there. Pre-installed bottle opener. All set, ready to go. I now mean, we don't need anything else. We're bringing um, cans camping anyway because <laughs> we don't want to deal with the glass but true it is there just in case it's needed mm -hmm. uh, we'll use this thing for just as much um family fun outings and as we will camping trips and stuff definitely like that. So we like all the multi-purpose features for sure uh this does open um right now there's not a latch though for it it's just kind of clipped inside and held in place so that's one thing that will definitely get revamped in some way um safety concerns there is you know the main ways in and out of the camper are through the two front doors so mm -hmm. if there ever was a reason why we couldn't come out through these uh this panel or the one in the back are uh large enough for us to fit through in an emergency so not ideal we may rework it eventually and put in a larger uh window or panel door or maybe rework the whole thing and make this whole back panel a one big door mm -hmm. on a slide out yeah or on a swing out excuse me uh, which would be nice. So we'll we'll get there eventually. That would require kind of reworking the camper all together, which is not ideal right now. We'd rather yeah. use it for as is for a while. Maybe a someday, really never yeah. kind of project. Yeah, Who we'll knows? See, you know, probably in the five to ten year mark. Sure. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let's take you underneath, and then uh, we'll fire it up and drive it around the um, the field here a little bit, so you can kind of see what it looks like, and then we'll call it a night for now um and then we're gonna kind of just keep documenting every time we do stuff to it and we'll bring you guys along for the process yeah. and the project so here we go we've got the underside there's that new fuel cell there frame is in okay shape definitely needs a little love um and some rust preventative and then some pour 15 and then some undercoating so that is my biggest project to do uh, before the fall and winter is to do that. So I'm going to treat it, sand it, 
uh, pour 15, and then undercoat. Uh, so that will be a multi-step process and will take me quite a few evenings to work on, but uh, we'll get it done. So that should wrap it up for this video. We just were, couldn't wait to share Rupert with you guys so you could check him out. Uh, we're just really excited to, uh, to drive him around, start working on it, and uh, kind of make it our own. So like we mentioned in the beginning of the video, his name is Rupert, um, and he is named after Sarah's late grandfather. He passed last year, uh, but he was a huge outdoorsman, big fly fisherman, uh, camping, hiking, all that kind of stuff. So this is uh, definitely in his honor and memory. He would have loved this thing. Yeah, he would have. Very, very excited for this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's gonna do it for now. Like I said, um, stay tuned. We'll have plenty more videos like this coming uh, as we do stuff with it, uh, use it, and work on it. So can't wait. Yeah. All right, good night. Good night.